Hi, this is Bob Scully, and welcome to another edition of The World Show, Entrepreneurs, the Fiera Series. You've heard of philosopher kings. It's a compliment that is applied to kings and prime ministers and presidents and great historical figures and diplomats and so on, usually people at the helm of countries. You're about to meet the philosopher entrepreneur, i.e. an entrepreneur who understands entrepreneurship so well that he's a marvel to listen to. His name is Joseph Abandonato. He works on both sides of the border. He's got factories in North Carolina and in the province of Quebec on this side of the border. And he's a man who practically gave us his life story, just, just jotting down a few notes when we asked him some questions, and it was incredible to, to, to read that. And in a sense, he's somebody who could have interviewed himself, and perhaps he did. Here he is. Joseph Abandonato, uh, welcome. Benvenuto. Uh, Thank you very much. Good and answer. before the interview, um, I was letting you in on one of our trade secrets here on the show, which is the pre-interview that our senior editor, Francine Blaze, always does, and which brings out the personal, the stuff that's not on the record, on the official record, sometimes the most interesting stuff. And this time, we didn't do that, because you said to her, listen, I'll do it. And indeed, you did it so well that I'm, gonna, I'm going to quote from it. So you're writing a note, basically, to Francine. Unwittingly, you are touching on the answer by a key word used in your question, the word spirit. People who think that an entrepreneur can be created by exposure to the business world, which then will act on some as a stimulant to be an entrepreneur, are missing the boat. Entrepreneurs are born. They must be gifted with a mind that has a super memory, otherwise they can't build on their lessons of life. They must be gifted with vision. Where else, other than the gifts from God, does everything else come from? The answer is the baggage that parents pound into us in our formative years. They must create a child with self-confidence to the extreme, super self-motivated, accept defeats because it is part of the learning process as long as we learn, obviously, and never work for the purpose of making money. The mantra must be, work for creating and building, success and money will come. Great, great wisdom there. And as I read through the research about your father, who did indeed pound the word is appropriate, all kinds of lessons into you, um, I, can, I can see that uh, you were bound to have success, and yet you had some great ups and downs building I'm a flex. Well, <clears throat> you can be sure that if you're alive, you're going to have successes and failures, and, and uh, it is obviously to become a complete person. You cannot, <clears throat> you cannot um, how would I say it, uh, think of yourself as a successful individual if you have not um, um, experienced the, the burdens and the, the uh, how would I say, the agony of defeat. Uh, mm -hmm, the thrill and, of victory. And, 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 and you have to, you, it just makes you a stronger person, it makes you a more determined person, it makes you the a wiser person, because if you, as I, as I said, and I, I don't know how I found those words, but as I said, it, 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 it's, it's all part of the learning process of, of becoming a good businessman or becoming a good man, never mind good businessman. And the frankness uh, which, which you describe certain episodes, we'll get to Imaflex and your industry and that story in a moment. It's fascinating as well. But the way you describe your learning years, um, the way you went through those two companies, you did very frankly. You were sweeping floors and so on for a long time in menial jobs until you realized you wanted to be your own man. Then you went to another company and you kind of got outsmarted by a rival. So I'll let you tell the, the story. <laughs> well, it's all... It's all part of the uh, tool building. So you cannot, uh, I mean, anything, uh, even a table, you can't, you cannot begin to even think of it if you don't get the tools. And mm -hmm. I spent, I spent 10 years uh, uh, working for other people and, and uh, getting the, uh, the uh, how to say, the tools of business or not business, but of learning the industry while I was going to university. Um, the, um, the, uh, 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 result was that I had experiences in both the academic and the um, uh, physical world, if you mm -hmm. wish, and and the um, uh, uh, the impetus, if you wish, was 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 uh, always the drive of starting my own business, and and I ended up uh, only working for two companies during those two years. One of them was for seven years; the other one was for three. And it was all for the purpose of again gaining the experience, because there was one. Portion, one portion of the, of, of uh, how would I say, the completeness of what I had to learn was missing, and that was in sales. And the first company that I, the only company that I had worked for, 
for seven years, they wouldn't allow me to go into sales. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to manage production. Manage production because then they could take six or eight months or a year off and leave everything <laughs> alone. <laughs> so, um, anyway. It, but it, you didn't feel exploited. You were learning, as you say. Oh, no, I never you felt. Were very no, patient, no, very patient. Very no. patient. Seven Bob, years Bob, is a long I, time. To... Bob, I, I never asked for a raise. I never felt exploited. To me, it was just a, a journey that I had to complete and uh, in order to. Uh, how would I say, realize, realize the dream that I had gotten when I first began to work. You know, it's, it's, we go back to uh, the birth of a businessman, if you wish. Uh, uh, the, moment, the moment I had worked for a few months, I knew that uh, there was a lot of things I could do much better because I, when I was looking at us, I said, how did these people make it? <laughs> you know, how can they be well off? How, you know, they, don't, they hardly... And, but it... <clears throat> Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself with ideas. There was a lot of uh, entrepreneurial individuals uh, who uh, got into business at the right time, meaning that it was, um, um, how would I say, it? It, it, it was the beginning of an industry. Yeah. So when you're looking at polyethylene and, and you uh, end up uh, <clears throat> uh, looking at the beginning of the industry, which was, let's say, in, in the 50s, and, uh, all you needed was a, a, a an individual, let's say a mechanic, and a salesman who would get together, and even if they put just five thousand dollars together, they'd become very successful. Yeah, the timing Without, was right. Yes, because the money, the money, there was so much. A uh, rising tide lifts exactly, all boats, as exactly. the economy says. But say. today's business will. Oh my God. You know, at any time, you can be influenced by 100 million factors, whether it mm -hmm. be imports from China, whether it be uh, your competitors have just bought uh, another company and now. Uh, 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 they're uh, three, five, ten times bigger than you and now wish to have market share as opposed to uh, But just... you were still patient despite that. The timing was good, but you weren't greedy or overly ambitious. You took the ten years to learn and you would get advice from your father at Sunday lunch. Oh, um, yeah, the, that was... The that Italian was, custom. <laughs> that was funny. My... Uh, we, we would go home on Sundays because uh, that was, that's our retarded tradition. And uh, my brother and I had finished school. Uh, we had just graduated. He's six years younger. He, he's the lazy guy. He took, he, took, he took the four year university course. I did it in 10. And my dad, who uh, he wasn't, you know, he, he was not a very talkative individual because he, 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 he had no education. They, they started working, both my parents started working six or seven years old on the farm. And we're talking in the old about, country. In the old country, in Italy, yeah. And, and um, my, my dad says, I have two geniuses now. What are you guys going to do? You know, and and I opened my mouth, and then from there he's all excited. You know, I got to give you uh, whatever I have when my hands are warm. That's mm. what she. That's what he said to me. He says, "I'd rather give you things while my hands are warm." And and. I but mean, you didn't want their, the, your parents' money as an initial stake. You oh them, no, you no, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready that Sunday. But the idea, the idea, of, uh, uh, how would I say it? I, I and I told him, I says, I can't take your money. I, I says. I, I, I just don't have everything together. I need a business plan, and I know I'm going to be, to them, $30,000 was, I mean, that's all they had. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I told them, I, I, I just can't take it. And, and he, he was disappointed in that. You know? And then uh, a few weeks later, after putting a plan together and, and, and uh, seeing that I was short, uh, meaning the business portion of it was, was going to uh, be uh, lacking liquidity, um, I went to see uh, the largest supplier that was in Montreal of raw materials, and I presented the plan, and I asked for a uh, six months to a year of, of, of material where I wouldn't pay for it. What, to my surprise, they, they immediately agreed. They, they agreed because it was a booming sector, and no, they knew they couldn't lose. <clears throat> they, they, agreed no. be, they agreed because they had seen me grow up in the industry from 17 to 27 and, and knew uh, what I had done at the companies that I'd worked for, so they had a lot of confidence. In me. Mm. And that's a big that's, an even, that's, that's even a big burden. Reason. It's, yeah. it's a big responsibility when be people believe in you because now you, you have to make certain you don't let them down. And you took your father's help at that point. Well, yes, the happiest moment of his life. And, and to describe that scene is, is unreal because the, the, my, my, dad, my dad couldn't write him. Um, so, uh, and my mom only knew how to sign her name. And, and so here, here's how it looks like. 
So I announced that, okay, I'm going to take the money because I have a plan. Everybody's happy. So he's shouting at my mom, go get the checkbook. And then they give me the checkbook. I have to sign the check to myself or, you know. Yeah, to, write it and out. And then my mom signs and then he puts an X and then he goes like this. But he's not letting the check go when he, you know what his last words were? Just as he lets it go, he says, take care of your brother. Boom. We've been, <laughs> we have been in business. My brother and I, we have been in business since that day. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And you went through some, I mean, most entrepreneurial stories have that. Before Amaflex, you, you hit a wall at some point. You had oh, a good no, idea? No, no, That was right after. That was right after. Oh, right after. That okay. was right after. The, the, the situation was that um, we ended up uh, being a very successful company. I, I sold that company. It was personal reasons. I sold that company. And then um, I ended up uh, 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 starting a new project that involved a patented product. And um, the um, again with polyethylene. Oh yes, yes. All the, uh, that's all I've been in. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I. It's not that I'm not interested in anything else. It's just that was my world. But uh, my world now is known from how would I say from from all the all of the spectrums from from the resin to the converting. So you um, saw the graduate, I guess. You the know, graduate. And the graduate, and the guy says, <laughs> yes, the future, the future yes, is plastic, yes, right? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> you took that to heart. Uh, well, uh, unconsciously, maybe. Yeah. It was, no, it I'm was just a, kidding you. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the, the, the situation is that uh, uh, when, I, when I started the project, which was the, uh, the first uh, um, uh, biodegradable uh, garbage bags, that's, that's, that's mm. what we wanted to do. We, I figured it was a great idea. I bought the rights. And um, uh, that failed miserably. It, it, it went up. It was too uh, early, probably. Yeah, it's too, uh, too early. And what struck me again in the research is that um, you took time out, took a big job. You yeah. lost a million bucks. Yeah. You took a big job. And your father scolded you, saying, what are you doing? Why aren't you starting another company? What yeah. are you doing taking a yeah. job? Yeah, my so dad. he was really yeah. behind you. Well, <laughs> I guess the biggest influence on on, on Males is the father, although we love our mom most, right? Well, I don't know about you, but that was my situation. <laughs> yeah. um, Mommy is and, 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 and it's Italy. amazing, you know, the, the, the man had no education, and, and, and he, would, he would just touch the right court. He knew his son. Mm -hmm. And he would, he would look at it and say, so you're now working for other people. How come? Why? And try to explain to him that, look, I make a lot of money. I don't need to risk anything, you know? It's not acceptable to him. Hmm. All he's saying is, so you lost a little money. It's just, you made million. it before, What's you're million? gonna yeah. make it again. What is the matter with you? You can't be working for other people. Oh my God. Well, he was right. You, you told well, he was you. right, yeah, sure. It's easy for you guys to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ended up with all of the torture of, okay, first you have to question everything, and then you say, yeah, you know, and after two, three months, you realize that he is correct. And he really makes you think, right? And he's staring at you. And then you, uh, then you go out and gamble again because that's what it is. Of course. Yeah. And then, so Imaflex grew, Imaflex as we know it today in North Carolina, in Canada, uh, which does plastics that, uh, that do a lot of sure. food, food containers. Yeah, food, and, food, food packaging uh, materials. It, yes. it began at that point. And, and to get into that industry a little bit, you're very humorous in your text. I, I couldn't read all of it uh, about environmentalists who judge plastic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. versus paper, which you yeah. feel is just as polluting as plastic, more. and need even more. Um, and so you, you stand up for your industry. Well, listen, uh, as a as I, uh, common sense, and if you look around you, you cannot feed a city without plastic. You go into the supermarket, imagine, imagine all that food would rot within day, meats, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can bread. You, you, uh, the, 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 the sanitary conditions that are required to feed a city demands that there's plastic. When you talk about paper and you talk about plastics, paper is, is unfortunately, they have a lot of money. And they've done a really good job to create the situation where aldermen and cities are trying to ban plastics. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, this is wrong because not only are they taking away the lungs of the earth, which is the trees, but then they end up having to use chemicals galore to create the conditions whereby this paper, this uh, wood product, can become paper, mm -hmm. and and um, uh, and you point out also, I had never seen it like that. That plastic is inert; 
and you say, therefore, of course, we have to be careful how we get rid of it, but it is inert. It will not pollute in the way that a chemical would, getting into the, of course, into, will, into the water or whatever. Um, uh, but then I had an image which, which uh, does shock some people. It's these big plastic islands that float out in the ocean that yes. collect and so on. Yes. So you are for proper, proper disposal of it. Well, of course, uh, the, the, beauty about, uh, the beauty about polyethylene and all plastic is, is, is as long as you're going to have oil, as long as we're a carbon-using world, you're going to have the ability to make plastic because it's, it's a gas product. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happens here is that the product is usable almost forever, meaning that you can recycle it and mm -hmm. recycle it and recycle it, thereby not depleting any yeah. new resources. And I think I mentioned, but I'm going to tell you anyway, the, the source of pollution is people. It's not the product. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you've gone, I've stopped by riversides and saying, oh, what a beautiful place to just have a picnic. And you get sick. You got, you got people leaving beer cans, leaving cigarette butts, leaving banana peels. Leave, you name it. Mm -hmm. They have it. <laughs> but let's pick on plastic. Yeah. I mean, I don't get it. I, I, it, it the, yeah, it, there's it, an it, element of the faddishness in there. It's, it's a fashion well, to, to I, look I, down I, on plastic somehow. It, it, Maybe yeah. because they saw the graduate too. I don't know. It's it's misconceptions because the people, as I said, they 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 look here. Let me give you another example. We make compostable materials, mm -hmm. right? And our compostable material it's not only us. The industry makes compostable materials. Now I have been in a situation where you go and you buy food at a grocery, and they give you a paper bag because they have decided that plastic is bad. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. It's raining that day. You can't get to the car before all your food <laughs> is on the floor. True. That's problem number one. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> <laughs> number two, when you talk about compostable material, there, there is compostable and then there's the fake stuff, which is the oxo-biodegradable. Housewives, the society, don't know the difference. Compostable materials, if you were to look at our world right now, Everything we have is recyclable. Mm -hmm. The only, uh, how would I say, the, 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 the one and only problem was the recyclables of kitchen waste. These are bi biodegradable. Yeah, by definition. If, yeah. if the society, if the world would be taught that if you would use a compostable bag and then to package this to get it out of your house to deliver to a compost site, you now have the conditions where the plastic disappears totally within the time frame of what is rotting. And then that product, that compost, becomes a natural fertilizer for all of the gardeners. And by and large though, uh, Imaflex has done very, very well. So uh, that too is proof of the pudding. This is a need, you're, fill, you're, you're fulfilling a real need out well, there. Is it, a is it a tough business yeah. to be in? The expansion in the United States, for example. That was in North Carolina. In, in North Carolina, we, in Thomasville, North Carolina, which is right near Greensboro. But the um, I've never seen such a good plan go so badly. Let me explain this. We decided that at that particular time we weren't going to buy a company or make an acquisition because the multiple of, of yeah, uh, was too high. just too high. So I'm telling my engineers is, is we're going to just buy new equipment and it will be the same equipment that we have here in Montreal, same manufacturers, same equipment. Do you understand? Yes. We did that. Material, uh, the, the equipment never started for three years. How come? It just wouldn't make the products we wanted to. <laughs> so so we, ended up, we ended up with three years of horror stores, and finally the equipment was fixed just in time for the recession. I've wow. never worked so Incredible. hard to fix yeah. something. Yeah, and then your timing's off. Well, no, but now, now, now we're back to good timing. Now everything is, 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 is okay again. But, but for five, six years, I've never had, maybe even longer, never had to put so much energy. I thought I could relax after 55 yeah. years old. <laughs> I ended up working twice as hard for six well, or seven years. Well, Joseph Abandonato, it did not escape me that before the interview you mentioned, we were talking about Thomasville and Greensboro, and you said one of your employees there makes great moonshine, so maybe you want to design it. <laughs> You want to design a special plastic bottle for the well, moonshine? Actually, actually, now it's legal. They're selling it. But one of my, one of my, uh, his name is Keith, and, and one of my employees, uh, he came to me. He says, "Have you ever had moonshine?" I says, "Well, no, not really." I just, he says, "I'm going to bring you some." Yeah. I said, "Okay." 
And I said, is this stuff safe? Because I've heard stories where you get blind or you get, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously making booze at home is not exactly, um, uh, how would I say, the end thing. You know, you're doing yeah. it on the side just for yourself. And sure enough, uh, he drank some, after which I waited about a half an hour, then I had some. Because <laughs> he was still standing. Well, I mean, he, he, he was didn't still keel okay. over. All right. And then I invited some neighbors over, and they just love this stuff. So I guess now we should start having In some In a nice plastic bottle. bottle, yeah. So Joseph Abandonato, you have a talent for life. That's clear to everybody watching. So long life to you and, and to Imaflex. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>